you're watching Power Nation. Welcome to Power Nation Builds. Now, if you want to haul a boat or haul the mail, you need a big performance pickup, and I know just the place to find it. Here's Truck Tech. This is our 2003 regular cab long bed diesel powered Silverado, but this was actually the shortest configuration of 2500 or 3500 series truck you could buy from GM. But eight foot is too long. Turns out we want to build something that GM never made, a regular cab short bed diesel truck. So if you can't buy it, what's the next best thing? Build it yourself. That's right. We're going to shorten this truck down to make it one of the sportiest Duramax powered Silverados you'll see rolling down the road. And we're going to call it Project Supermax. And the best part is we're going to accomplish this using all factory parts. So we'll get this bed yanked off, show you what we mean. We've got our frame all cleaned up and we're back in the shop. And you can see from the factory there's a seam in the frame about a third of the way back and this is where the two pieces are welded together. Now this is what we'll take advantage of to convert our long bed into a short bed. Now on GM trucks of this era, long wheelbase frames and short wheelbase frames are very similar other than the added length right here. So this means we can modify the frame and make it look completely OEM. We'll prep for surgery by removing everything connected to the frame. All right. These are an aftermarket hanger that somebody welded to the frame, making our job quite a bit harder. Turns out we need to cut about 14 inches out of this thing. Now this is a very important cut, so remember the old saying, measure twice and cut once. And anytime you do any type of framework like this, make sure the frame is square and level. That's very important. So the next thing for us to do is pull a couple of measurements, make a mark and cut this baby up. Not until our lines are marked and the math is checked, we can begin dissecting the frame. Now we'll do this using four and a half inch cutoff wheels on angle grinders. Sliding the two halves of the frame together, you can see how the overlapped joint will make a very strong connection. None of this is guesswork. All right, we're looking for 63 and a quarter. We are 63 and three quarters, so bump it in a little. The research we did at the junkyard on the short box frame really pays off here. And we'll take our time double and triple checking our measurements, making sure she's level. Yep. Okay. Right on the money. Perfect. Now, since our frame is 3 16 of an inch thick, we probably won't have to worry about any warpage. But I still like to run short welds and let it cool as I go. And for you guys at home with a little 110 welder, probably not going to cut it on a job like this. All right, we've got the frame all welded up, bed mounts relocated, frames all wire brushed, and ready for a coating. Now, for that, I'm going to be using DupliColor's Rust Barrier. It's a one-step process. You don't need any rust preventative or treatment, and it leaves our frame with an impact-resistant rubberized coating. Two coats took just a couple of hours. We picked up a six and a half foot bed from our local junkyard, and we're gonna set it on to see how our regular cab short bed diesel looks. This truck started as a long bed, not really sexy at all, which is why we shortened the wheelbase by chopping 14 inches out of the frame. You see, GM never offered a short box diesel pickup. So what did all of this work buy us? Style, I mean, shorter is cooler and the truck is now lighter, but with the strength of the three quarter ton frame. So the only thing left for us to do now is to build on the strength of the LB7 with some serious performance upgrades. Coming up next, inside or out, this Silverado is first in line for major upgrades. We're back on Truck Tech, custom fitting our new 4-inch Flowmaster American Thunder exhaust to our short frame. With everything lined up the way I want it, I can tack the tubes into place.
Now we have the two halves of the system installed, and believe it or not, this little guy right here is actually the muffler. On a diesel engine like this, the turbocharger removes a lot of the exhaust noise, so the muffler doesn't have to be as big. Now with the two parts installed, they're actually a little bit closer together than I originally thought. There's only about an 8 inch section that I have to fill. So what I think I'm going to do is make some cuts, move the muffler a little bit farther to the rear, add about a 15 degree bend to the front pipe, and hopefully they'll connect up together. With the exhaust connected, we'll lower this truck and hear how it sounds. Oh, nothing like a Duramax. I've got to get some parts out of the way to make room for our larger intercooler. But why go through the trouble for this upgrade? When air from a turbo is compressed, it gets hot pretty quickly. And as the temperature climbs, the oxygen density drops. Cooler oxygen enriched air since the engine is way more efficient improving combustion. Now I can separate the radiator from the intercooler and lift out the stock restrictive cooler. After a little persuasion, the radiator reattaches to our new intercooler. We'll install the beam to secure the whole package, then remove the stock cooler tubes and install the 3 inch polish tubes and secure the couplers. From there, it's a simple matter of reinstalling the parts we had to take off. There are a lot of intake systems on the market that are essentially a filter on the end of a tube, but you really can't call that a cold air intake because it sucks in warm air from the engine bay. The Bully Dog Rapid Flow is a true cold air intake because the filter sits inside a box and draws cold air in from outside the vehicle. And remember, the colder the air, the more power you'll make. All the hard parts we have installed so far on our 03 Duramax will increase performance and economy a little bit, but the real secret to upping the power lies within tuning the computer. We made a baseline run on the Duramax's stock computer that yielded 238 horsepower and 430 pound-feet of torque, really close to the factory numbers at the crank. The Bully Dog GT Platinum works with GM, Ford, and Dodge Diesel and comes with an SD card preloaded with tunes for your specific truck. With the GT's towing tune installed, our Duramax gained an additional 54 horsepower and added 100 pound-feet of torque. And that's just the first tune. We'll skip the second tune and go straight to the big daddy, the extreme tune and see how much power this Bully Dog tuner can pull out of our Duramax. Our final spin yielded 374 horsepower and 684 for torque. That's an overall gain of 136 horses and 254 pounds of torque over stock. And we're not done yet. Stage two, we'll try and double these numbers with additional upgrades, including a bigger turbo, high flow manifolds and uppipes, and fuel system upgrades. We've got most of the parts of the Duramax in the paint booth, and LT's been in there finishing everything up, getting it degreased and tacked off, so we should be good to go. This base is loaded with gold pearl, so it's important to make sure good technique is used. That looks good. I really dig that color, man. I think that's exactly what you wanted to see. You know what? It pops. I love it. Plus, that clear coat has a nice kind of OEM orange peel to it. Yes. It looks perfect. That's what we were going for. The gold pearl is going to really pop out in the sun. OK, so we've seen some show. Now, how about some go? It's time now to put the Super in Supermax. Our goal is to improve on the 370 wheel horsepower that we left off with for stage one and hopefully raise that figure to just a little bit over 500. Now, yes, the engine does have 200,000 miles on it, but it spent most of its life being bone stock. And on top of that, the stock bottom ends on the LB7 are actually pretty strong. Now, when I say bottom end, I'm talking about all the rotating parts, the pistons, the connecting rods and the crankshaft. 
Depending on who you ask, and more importantly, who's doing the tuning, the stock bottom end will hold roughly 550 to 600 horsepower before it starts to scatter itself to pieces. Now, our goal is to push the performance envelope of the LB7. We want to get right up to that ragged edge, but we don't actually want to break anything. So, to give this engine a fighting chance, we've pulled it out of the truck and we've pulled the heads off. We're going to throw in some new gaskets and secure the heads with some studs. Next, we're going to take care of some leaks on the bottom end and replace some of those higher mile wear items. So, hopefully, this engine will last us another 200,000 miles. The Duramax uses a two-piece oil pan that's held to the engine with several bolts and a bead of silicone. The upper cast aluminum pan has many small Allen bolts around the outside, and the flex plate has to be removed from the crank in order to access the two larger bolts that go through the bell housing and into the oil pan. With a quick pry, the pan separates. Using a 36mm 12-point socket, the balancer can be removed. Cool thing about this, it's a slip fit, pulls right off followed by the water pump and the front timing cover. Next, I'll remove the nut from the oil pump drive gear, unscrew the pickup tube, and remove the old pump. With the upgraded oil pump installed, I'll slide on the gear and use some red thread locker to make sure the left-hand threaded nut won't back out. Then, tighten it to 74 pound-feet. The Merchant TIG welded water pump finishes out the front. The upper oil pan also needs silicone to form a leak proof seal, and it too gets bolted onto the block. With the engine right side up, some rags are stuffed into the block above the lifters to keep any trash out of the engine while we clean the deck. All the work we've done today has been leading up to this. A Borg Warner S300 turbo kit that we picked up from Screamin' Diesel Performance. Now this charger is going to have the airflow that we need to support our horsepower goals, and even more when we finally build the bottom end of this Duramax. We're finishing up some last minute details on our Supermax diesel build. The rear axle that came underneath our truck is more than strong enough to support 500 horsepower. That's nasty. So all we're doing is changing out the fluid. I'll clean up the mating surface rinse out the housing with brake cleaner, and install a PPE cast differential cover. The aluminum helps dissipate the heat, and it holds more fluid. All told, we need four quarts. I was thinking some funny jokes I could put in there. Our original hitch was long gone, and since this is a truck after all, we still need to be able to tow with it. We went to Summit Racing and picked up this Class 4 hitch that bolts in using the factory holes. The Class 4 rating means we can run up to 1,000 pounds of tongue weight and 10,000 pounds of trailer, which is probably more than we'd want to haul with a short wheelbase truck anyway. Well, the truck is 100% put back together and we're ready to fire it up. Now, when we installed the transmission, we filled up the fluid to the level on the dipstick. Now, as soon as we fire up the engine, that's going to change. With the wheels off the ground, I like to put the truck in gear, let the wheels turn, and the transmission shift a few gears. Then use the brakes to stop it and shift it into reverse, and let it turn some more. This will pump fluid through all the clutch pistons so we can get an accurate fluid level. Overall, I'm pretty happy. It's sounding good. It took a minute for the motor to crank up just because this is a fresh build and there's air in the fuel system. Now, the power steering is whining just a little bit, but it's probably low on fluid. We'll have to check the coolant and everything else, but overall, we're in good shape. Remember, on an automatic transmission, you have to check the fluid with the truck running. Well, right in the middle of the notches. Now, I've got about 100 miles on this truck since we put in the new transmission, and I just got the front end aligned, and everything actually seems to drive pretty straight and smooth, but I don't want any surprises. So I'm going to show you guys what we usually do for a final nut and bolt inspection of a project of this caliber. I'll get the truck up on the lift for a nut and bolt recheck, specifically focusing on the suspension, braking, and steering systems. I'll start with the brake caliper bolts, as well as the caliper brackets and the bolts that hold the unit bearing into the spindle. Next are the lower and upper ball joint bolts 
as well as the lower control arm bolt. Basically any fastener that's attached to a moving suspension part. We just had the front end aligned at a local tire shop, so I'm going to double check the cam bolts to make sure they're tight. It's especially important to mark these for position on this truck because the four wheel drive launches we plan on doing can get pretty harsh, so I need to be able to tell at a glance if they get moved. Out back, the important things to check are the front leaf spring bolts, which I already tightened but forgot to mark, the shackle bolts, as well as the U-bolts under the axle. Up next, whether on the streets, on the dyno, or at the track, Supermax puts on a show. We started out with a single cab long bit that had admittedly seen better days. Mechanically, it was exactly what we're looking for. We got it back to the shop and immediately started tearing it down to a bare frame to begin our short bed conversion. It was a tedious task that a lot of guys can relate to, but in just a few hours, all right, we could begin planning a frame dissection. 14 inches were removed from the center, and it slid back together using the original factory double overlap. Extra care was taken to make sure the frame was level, square, and straight, so that the truck will drive straight down the road and not all cattywampus. Stage one of our plan included all the basic mods diesel guys do. We started with a larger intercooler to keep EGTs low, a three inch high flow downpipe that connected to a four inch dual exhaust, cold air intake, and a programmer. With these simple modifications, Supermax made a best of 374 horsepower at the rear wheels, but that's nowhere near enough power. So a little later on, we yanked the motor out and tore it down to the bare short block so we could install some new head gaskets and studs and prepare the bottom end for some serious cylinder pressure. High flow exhaust manifolds and up pipes connect to a T4 turbo pedestal and on top sits an SDP S366 SXE turbocharger. We upgraded the Y bridge and both charge pipes to three inch pieces and the turbo intake measures in at four. To back up all that torque the LB7's making and put it to the ground, we installed a 2000 RPM stall speed converter that's made it to an SDP Allison that's built to handle 750 horsepower. We moved over to the engine power shop and their chassis dyno to get some accurate horsepower and torque readings with our PPEI custom tune. At this point, we'll skip the second street tune and go right to number five, max power. Oh, hey, oh, hey, oh, oh. Are you ready? I'm ready. 5.53. Okay. 952. <laughs> Remember, we've got five tunes to play with in Project Supermax, and we can dial them in on the fly. Well, this is the very first pass that we're gonna make down the drag strip in this truck. I've got her on tune number three in the truck's two-wheel drive right now. So we're gonna see how it does, how it reacts, and maybe turn it up from there. That first run wasn't too bad. We did a 9.2 at 82 miles per hour, and that was on tune number three. So we definitely have a little bit more power to go. Now the trick is putting all that power to the ground. But the cool thing about this diesel truck is a huge cooling system. We've been hot lapping it for a little while here, and the temperature is 172 degrees, so we don't have any worries about it. So I'm gonna try a couple more passes on tune number three, see if I can get it to stick a little bit better just by varying the technique of how I launch out of the hole. Next, we're gonna crank her up to tune number four and see if we can get it to stick on the launch. It turns out street radios aren't meant for drag strip grip and the massive diesel torque just spins the tires, but it does lead to a little faster 914 at 83 miles per hour. The trouble I'm having is traction. This thing just wants to spin and spin and spin with all that torque. But here's the cool thing. This is a four wheel drive truck. So I can just reach down, switch it into four wheel drive, and I'm gonna tune it to tune number five. So hopefully by launching a four wheel drive, I can put all that extra power down to the ground, get out of the hole quicker, and get a little bit better mile per hour. We'll see what happens, I guess. 
On the first attempt, I foot braked it up to 15 PSI and let it rip, which turned out to be a bit much. It spun the front wheels and shook pretty bad, which unloaded the suspension, so I had to pedal it, which resulted in a 905 at 82 miles per hour. On the next attempt, I boosted her to only 10 PSI, and it still spun, but not as bad. On the last run, I launched it just a bit softer on six pounds, and she hooked up and boogied down the track at an 819 at 85 miles per hour. Not too bad for a heavy three-quarter ton truck. All right, LT's Duramax, it turned out awesome. Not just looks, but the thing actually performs well at the drag strip in two-wheel drive or four-wheel drive. Seeing something like that go down the track that weighs that much and it's a diesel is pretty impressive. LT and Jeremy did a killer job. I am very impressed with how our little orange truck did today, even on these street tires. Now, even in four-wheel drive, it's still a little bit of a challenge to put all that power down. She still wants to spin, but that's okay. This is not a dedicated drag truck. You can drag race it, though. You can show it. You can drive it to work. You can pull the boat. I mean, you can just have fun with it. This makes me want to build a dedicated twin-turbo diesel drag racer. Project Supermax is a big orange beast of a sport truck, and I sure hope that it inspired you today. Of course, you can check out all of our great projects right here on Power Nation Builds.